Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this sample, I'm going to show you how to do some multi-part machining. Uh, this sample is going to be based on putting a bunch of parts in just a big piece of material and machining all those parts. Let's get started. Here I'm going to open up the part that I want to work on. And I don't really need to open it other than I just want to show you what it looks like. And there it is. It's a nice, simple little part. It's a production part for something. Who knows for what? We'll call it a wire harness. Why not? That's what the little slot's for. Uh, let's start by creating a machine part settings document. So here, I'll validate that. It includes my part automatically. Now, what I want to do is I want to include another instance of this part. And I can do that two ways. One would be to drag and drop it in here. Or another way, which I think is more fun, hold control, grab the part, drag and drop a copy of it. Like that, I can start doing my positioning. First, I'm going to start by taking this face here to this face here. And I'll offset that maybe a half of an inch, maybe 550 even, why not? From here, if I hold my Alt key down, I can rotate independently, and I'm grabbing with my left key to rotate. And that's just so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I'll position there. And finally, I'm going to take this to this here. That's going to create an axis on axis mate, which I'm going to offset back one inch. And all I'm showing you here is that I'm kind of manually nesting this. And that's as far as I'm going to take that. And maybe, you know what, I'm going to take this back to 0.5. Who knows? That's perfect. Now that my part positioning is done, I'm going to lay out a pattern next. So I'll go to my tools. And here, I'm going to go to repetition. I'll select the parts that I want to repeat. And now I'll create my pattern. In this case, I want to start the origin of my pattern to be right there. And now we want this to be maybe five and a half, and how about four and a half? Perfect. And as you can see here, right now we have three going up, and we have four instances going this way. Maybe we'll just make three instances going this way for now. Let's validate, and validate, and like that, we now have our multi-part setup. Next, I'm going to go to Edit Part NC, and make sure the software sees all of those parts, which it automatically did. It put all of my parts inside the finish category and it's shrink wrapping a piece of material around this for me which is perfect I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller make it an eighth inch and like that I'm now ready to machine so I'm gonna hit save and then I'll send this part to machining one of the things I'm gonna do in machining is I'm gonna use faceted stock instead of a true solid model and this is just to gain in some calculation time okay let's validate and like that Here's our parts ready to machine. And now maybe I want to start by facing. So I'm going to just right click on a face there and go to end milling. And here I'll go grab an end mill. I'll scroll down my list until I find the one I want. I could use a filter, of course, to search. But here I'm just going to use this little 3 8 jobber and say OK. And like that, you see a preview of all of the tool path on the part. But maybe, you know what, we didn't want to actually just face this off. Maybe we wanted to machine this down. So what I'm going to do is grab my stock to leave and flip it and bring it down some value. And I'm going to go just a little bit below half inch. My part's half inch thick. And we'll give it a second here to calculate the toolpath. Because remember, Top Solid 7 is doing everything dynamically on the fly as we go. Now, when you get into multiple parts like this, maybe you don't want to see the preview. You can turn that on and off just with a simple click of the mouse. But like that, what was once facing is still facing, but it's facing with style because it's getting rid of all of that material automatically for me. Let's go ahead and validate that. Here, it's going to crunch out, calculate all of the G-code. It's also going to update that stock model for us. Pretty cool. And all of this in under five minutes. I think at the video moment, we're a little over four minutes right now. So now we're just going to wait for everything to update. Toolpath will be created, G codes created. If I rotate this, we can even see the simulation has begun. Pretty neat. Here's all of our G code, of course, as well. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. And maybe here, what I'll do is go into verify. And here we can see what it does. So here you can see it's verifying the material removal of everything. Pretty nice. So, this is just to show you a cool feature of Top Solid Cam 7. 
multi-part machining when you're doing families of parts like this and you just want to get creative. Now it could also have been multiple different parts as long as it all fits in the material we don't care we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Okay. Now one last final thing to show you just because I can do it is I think we should go back and change our pattern. Right? Maybe we want more parts. Maybe the customer called up and said, you know what, we need more parts. So if I go to my Entities Manager here back in my Part Prep document, go to Patterns, I can go here to my definition and say, you know what, I need actually five. Maybe going the other way, we need four. So now we have more parts. We hit Save. We come back to here. Pattern's up to date. All we need to do is regenerate the toolpath. So again, this is just another short sample to show you some of the power behind Top Solid Cam 7 today when used with the power of Top Solid Design's powerful assembly strategies. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.